Well, I earn an eight wheel drive Argo, which means maintenance is something I have to do pretty well every time I take it out. Today we're going to put some grease in because I've done about four or five days of all sorts of amphibious crossings and running and stuff and I've got to put some grease in the outer bearings at the very least and probably grease some chain oil. I've also got to do an oil change on that and that and probably grease the drive shaft bearings and change fuel filters on both of them and probably grease the chains and do the inner bearings and pull the floor pans out. There is so much stuff to do. Now, if you're a regular subscriber, you probably will have seen my little short that I did earlier today explaining that multiple sclerosis is kicking my ass, as it does. I have uh, my next treatment um, in a couple of days in which I'm going to have to drive this to go uh, because due to COVID, I can't get the usual help to... Uh, do stuff and this might be a delivery vehicle coming around the corner for me um, but I can't get the usual help that I normally do so I'm gonna have to drive myself and that normally knocks the stuff out of me after my treatment and I need somewhere to lay down it's about a thousand K's past its uh, oil change time so that'll be interesting anyway let me see what the post he's got for me all right so um, delivery guy had nothing for me today so I should probably focus on what I can reasonably achieve um, as I said, I'm a bit fatigued. I have brain lesions from a previous attack of MS as well, which makes concentration a little difficult. Um, not to mention I'm probably somewhere in the autistic category as well. So let's see, I am charging my battery on the back here, my trolling battery, and it's in absorption state, so it's probably largely charged now. Um, this is my big sealed AGM battery I use for trolling. I'm currently charging it off the inverter on the 24 volt system of this, which we're running about 580 watts of solar panel on the roof. And this is a little 500 VA Victron inverter. We're currently sitting at 27.6 volts, putting about five and a half amps in. That's probably because that's all that's required to charge the battery at this point. Um, and those batteries are probably already charged. Uh, these are in a 90 volt string. Uh, running through an MPPT controller and my neighbors have seen I'm out filming and turn the music up that's fun there's going to be a musical video by the sound of it anyway I've got to get some grease in and what that means is I have to get these holes top dead center here so that I can get the grease gun through that or I use my grease fittings and use the slide on one but I think both of these are largely aligned, so I can probably undo all these straps and just roll it back half a turn. So I might start with that, because they're the most important ones. Alright, we've got our straps taken off. I'm going to clear some of the junk out of the way. I'm sorry if I seem a little bit more lethargic than usual. Oh, here's another distraction. PC-21 flying overhead. Uh, now... I feel a bit lethargic today and I probably sound it, so uh, you might have to deal with that. Let's get this thing moved. Handbrake off. Generally, I don't know if I can do this one-handed. I think I can. I'm only doing this because she's still hitched up. I can probably get it right to the back of the trailer here. Until we get these holes almost to the center. That's good. We're still hitched up, so the trailer's not going to tip back. So that's most of those guys at the top. I think I've skipped a chain link or two on one of these tires because this is slightly different. They used to all be nicely lined up. But um, now these guys are almost where I need them. So I think I'll start on the other side first and then I'll figure this problem out. All right, so one of the good things about having a steel trailer is you can uh, stick your magnetic base camera down Normally I'd have to get in here and clean all the crap off these grease fittings, but I took it for a dip in some fresh water yesterday and it looks like it cleaned them all off nicely. So I can pretty well just shove my grease gun straight on this one. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but we go in from the other side. This is the bit that I generally have to do by feel. Now, I don't think there's any set number of pumps to do this. I usually do it till a little bit of water starts squirting out. 
which there is a little bit of water in these bearings. Okay, there's a bit of grease come out now. So it's about five pumps, and about what we're going to need. The middle bearings are taking a load, maybe not. Let's move down. Now, I'm not going to do every bearing. I'm just going to give you a general gist here. Um, this one does need a clean. There's another PC21A. Pilatus PC21. I think the P is standing for Pilatus. It's a roulette aircraft. Let's see if we go here. Five, six, seven, there's some water, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve pumps. There's a little bit of grease coming out. All right, you just got to go until you hear the slight crackle of grease. All right, let's get the, uh, the rest of these ones done and we'll go around the other side. All right, well, we've got the driver's side done. Um, and this is where we get a little risky. We're getting a little bit back towards the back of the vehicle With the battery on the back here the balance point has shifted slightly But I think we're still just slightly forward of center So I think I can pretty safely hang this wheel off over the back. We don't need to go much further But we need to just go far enough That we can get that there Now we are tilting the trailer back a bit even though it's hitched on so I'm gonna put the handbrake on probably need to check the thickness of the handbrake so the thickness of the brake pads and also the uh, brake fluid and stuff in this thing at some point all right now we can get into these ones Let's position this camera somewhere interesting all right well the battery carrier being powder coated steel gives me a really good spot for the mag mount for my camera or my GoPro so we can see this one see if we go here I am already getting pretty tired so this might be all I do for the time being we'll see how we go although the weather is stunning for this bit of water coming out oh we're about eight nine ten we won't be far off now there's a bit of water dripping that's 12. I usually like to stop every now and then and just make sure. Oh, too much of an angle on the grease fitting there. Oh, this one took a bit. Yeah, well, it's pushed the water out, so that means there's a bit of pressure. So as I leave it sit in the sun today, it should continue to push that water out. All right, I've got three more to go. Well, that's the outer bearings done. Now I've got a bunch of sand in the floor pans I'd like very much to get out. I have a bunch of accumulated junk in the back here, some of which will go back in, some of which doesn't. I need to unstrap my outboard and get that out of the way. I'm having to think whether or not I'm still up to doing the rest of this at the moment, but it really does need to be done. So I guess I'm gonna have a crack at it. Once I'm done with this, I'm probably going to shuffle trailers around and I'm going to be done for the day. I've still got tomorrow to have a crack at an oil change. We'll see if that happens. But uh, for the moment, I need to get the front pans out. All right. Let's have a look here. Now, quite some time ago, the locking screws vibrated out from this. So it's not actually held in other than with tension. So uh, it does make removal a bit easier. Now I'm careful with this. I don't want to sprinkle sand all over the chains just like I did just there. All right. So I just sprinkled chain all over, uh, sand all over my chains. That is not good. And wow, I've got some really slack chain in here. That one's all right. This one's not. I think that tensioner hasn't come up. So we'll need to do that. 
gonna get a rag over for that side and uh, wipe some of that sand off the chain if I can. All right, here we go here. As much of that off as I can because it's not gonna be great for anything having sand stuck to a chain. I will chuck some oil on them. But I definitely think that my chain rattling issue this this is what oh that one's actually really tight but that could also be because the handbrake's on let me take that so that one's quite tight. um the other one is extremely loose so i might see if i can pull the tensioner up a notch on that one um yeah it's all all these need a bit of oil in them the bearings are probably okay but I'll give him a squirt of grease while I'm in here. Yeah, all right. I'm not looking forward to doing this today. All right, my uh, sponsor, uh, TTMI uh, Machinery, they uh, they supply me with this stuff. I have to pay for for this stuff, but you know, maybe if I sell a couple of Argos for them, maybe they'll provide me with some more stuff. Uh, I'm careful around the brake pads here because technically I should have a little shield to stop me getting the oil on the brake pads. But I'm going to spray what I can get through here, which is some of the chains. Yep. And uh, I'll do the other side. This is a pretty time-consuming job, so we'll be back once I've done most of that. Okay, so just as I start recording... So, just as I started the recording... Okay, because I'm using voice control on this, uh, this GoPro, there's a few words I can't use. So, just as I commenced um, making record of what I'm looking at right now, PC21 flew overhead. And I'm using voice control now because I've got really, really greasy hands. So we've pretty well greased all of this up. And uh, previously, the GoPro switched orientation to uh, 9 by 16, which I didn't want. So I've had to record this again. Anyway, my chain slack on the passenger side here is much greater. And I think the clatter I've been hearing are my chains rolling over the body frame here. So this spring-loaded tensioner, I should be able to lift up somehow. But um, I think it might be a little bit stuck. And I think that might be why it's not automatically adjusting up. Um, one side will lift up, but the other will not. And now I've got the handbrake off. I should be able to rock these chains along a bit, try and shift the tension in there a bit. So I think the tension underneath is partly what's responsible here. Can I lift this up one notch? Maybe. No. Just like not quite enough. Oh. Wow. And my camera shifted a bit, I think. Um, so I can lift it quite a lot on that side, but not on the other. Something's not quite right in here. I think I've got a problem with the chain tensioner. Um, so now, definitely need voice control. Uh, I gotta go and wash this stuff off. I'm gonna ask the dealer about this one. Um, Cause that's one that I'm not experienced enough to know quite what's going on there. And I've got some inner bearings to grease. Um, and I've got the rear floor pan. So I think I'm just gonna do the basic oiling and greasing, get this done so it doesn't deteriorate while it's sitting here. Um, so, if you hear some of me commanding my GoPro recorded over this, that will be down to my editing skill. Oh, and I've got oil. Hang on, I've got oil on the ground here. I wonder if I'm losing diff oil or something, or if I just spilt a bit. But that definitely looks like gear oil. Huh, I might check my transmission oil level. Anyway, um, time to go clean my hands off and continue with the rest of it. Now it's time to clean out some of the accumulated junk 
I hope you appreciate my neighbor's choice of music. I've heard worse come out of that house, so you're not doing too bad today. You know, every time I go to the beach, I find some songs, usually one of a pair. So, um, I might just pull this whole floor pan out using the strap that I usually, or used to hold the battery down with. It's easy to just throw that. Well, I've got a bit of chain slop going on in the back here. And uh, I could definitely set that up with a bit more tension. But for the moment, I'm just greasing and oiling. Where's my oil? Here's my oil. I hope you guys can see what's going on. Let's check the viewfinder. Yep, sort of. Here we go. This is good tacky chain oil, this stuff. It really sticks on there. Try and get as much of the chain as I can from here. Right. Okay. It's about as much as the chains that I can access from here. Um, so at least that'll keep them from rusting or building up. I'm noticing quite a bit of slack in this chain. It could be that I'm up for new chains soon or taking a link out of them. But uh, yeah, I've definitely got some slack in these rear chains. Um, it's probably a little bit beyond spec. So yeah, I might actually take this into the dealer and get them to do it. Because I'm losing my energy to do stuff like this. But let's get some grease in here. Let's see if I can find that. All right, grease gun, bit of fresh grease. Where's our viewfinder? We might move our camera angle. There's this for you guys, you can see better what's going on. Now, clean the nipples off. These are the four easiest ones, probably in the whole vehicle once you've got the floor pan out, are these rear ones. They probably don't need much, they haven't been underwater. It's going to give it about five pumps. There's lots of grease on them already. So these guys don't need to be done anywhere near as regularly as the outers. And it's mostly because I like to push the water out of the bearings. got to be careful with this stuff it looks like you're bleeding um, this is a, like a marine grade prop shaft grease there is a bit of water sitting in the channels in here too so um, I might clear some of the debris away from the, um, the bung plugs here and uh, we'll drain all that out soon oh but that is some greasy oily muck I'll leave the floor pan out and hopefully some of that will evaporate out in the Sun but yeah I do need to clean off stuff around the bung plugs Right, well we're hanging out up the front here now. Got these ones which aren't too hard to get to, but the front two are really hard. Um, get that one. Oh, camera moved. All right, we're over the other side now. Get this one. Alright, now I've got to get in the front. Alright, now here's the tricky bit. There's one that's really easy to overlook, and that one's right here. It often gets forgotten. It's not the hardest one though. Alright. Oh, if I can get my grease gun to actually pump grease into it. I think it's a different size. No, it wasn't clipped on properly. One's fairly firm, we're not going to force it into that. The next one, this is one of the two hardest ones, and this is, I think, got a right angle 
nipple on it. I think they call them zerks in Canada or America. But I call them nipples over here in Aussie land. Let's see if I can get this one here. We're on. Not quite. We got that one. Flexible nose certainly makes that easier. Or flexible nozzle. My language and speech is suffering a bit, so gotta take a couple minutes. All right, we're on the driver's side again, the right-hand side, at least in this particular model. Let's go onto this one. one I can't see from here oh, this is the hardest one of the whole vehicle it's actually in buried in there um, I think yeah because that's the outer the inner one is right in there I'm gonna have to go through the bonnet for this one my GoPro is uh, so greasy now I can't see the red ring on the button it's gonna have to get a good wash all right off comes the bonnet our way into the top here now can we see that grease nipple we can that's a right angle one right down there so we'll find somewhere to snap this camera on um, there probably gets in the way of the grease gun but at least you can see what's going on there's my grease rag reach down and wipe that off I've seen some of the other ones, um, some of the videos in the Argo Owners International page, uh, Facebook page, and uh, they do not look as easy as this one. So I think I'm kind of lucky. There we go, I'm right on the nipple. All right, five pumps in there. All right, I definitely need to get extended grease nipples for this. I'm bringing them all up to a block up the front here. All right, so we're in there. Um, yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'll jack this up at some point and spin the tires around and get all the sections of the chain oiled thoroughly. Uh, something else I need to check. Let's move our camera. All right, because there's oil on the floor, let's have a look here. Check our trans oil level. Probably due for a change. It's a smidgen on the low side, but that will change when it gets warm. I might add a little bit of trans oil or gear oil in there um, to get it happening. All right, let's go hose out the floor pans. Well, I am shagged after just that. Um, and this has pretty much taken me half the day. I'm a lot slower than I normally would. I can definitely tell my next treatment's coming up. So can the Waddle Bird, apparently. And another PC21. They're, they're doing pretty extensive training lately. I think they've got a, an air show coming up. Anyway, we're going to leave these guys dry in the sun for a bit. We're going to let the water dry out of the tub for the moment. And uh, I'm going to go inside, have some lunch and take a break. Because uh, I, I can't go on anymore at the moment. I am too shagged. Um, I don't think I'm going to get the oil in the six wheel today. And certainly not the four wheeler. Um, I think it'll probably survive for another 200k round trip. Which is what I've got to do tomorrow or the day after. I can't remember. I have to check my calendar. Anyway, um, let's go inside, take a break. And um, yeah, we'll come back out in a few all right so it's about an hour later and uh, most of the water has dried up um, the tub on this is exceptionally hot now um, and it's Australian Sun with its extremely high UV index um, so yeah I do need to park this under cover because it's uh, coming on to summer soon and I don't want it to melt away and warp just sitting out here 
to get it under cover i gotta move that guy though and i am rapidly falling in a heap um i think i am gonna have to admit defeat and i think i'm just gonna loosely throw a tarp over this i'm gonna put the body panels back in and uh that'll be about me done for the day all right uh let's get that done So that's me done for now it's too hot for me now i know it's not great it's probably about 25 degrees but uh ms being heat sensitive and me being a big guy full of muscles i get hot quickly my concentration is absolutely shot i'm starting to lose track of even how to use an octopus strap and uh forgetting things like what i had for breakfast and stuff all indications it's time for me to stop so it is right at the very end of the month and i'm very much due for my next treatment so uh yeah i'm gonna call it quits i'm gonna shut the back door i'm going inside the rest of this stuff will get cleaned up when it cools off and there's my financial manager on the way back so rescue is close at hand all right i'll see you in the next one hope this was fun i know i wasn't energetic as usual but uh i'll try to be in the next one anyway see you later